Hello. Guess I should unmute. Hi. Are you Jesse? Yes. Hi. Yay, we made it. <laughs> Got that, everyone. Thanks for coming back. <laughs> I just want to make sure that everyone who was in the other <clears throat> meeting. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Brian is on vacation, so I think he just signed on to set us up and hopefully he's back on. Hopefully he will go away and be on vacation. Um, great. Did everyone make it over? Are we missing anyone? Yeah, I can't remember everybody who was there. <laughs> That's another sign of age. <sighs> What's my excuse, Kathleen? <laughs> oh, um, I was like, I couldn't remember everybody who was in from the other meeting. And I'm like, oh, that's another sign of age. <laughs> Me too. Oh, Me God. too. Okay, so Rachel, Dana. I, th I think we're all here. Yeah. I know there were a few regrets. I know. I think Ellen won. Ellen and Lori. Ellen and Lori, okay. Ellen, Lori, and Brian. Okay. Brian. Yep. And um, Great. do we know um, Ashlyn? I haven't heard okay. back from her. Or Michael, is he on his way? I'm just going through and doing the, putting uh -huh. people in the middle. Okay. Mm hmm Okay, and Dana's here. Okay, let me get back. Okay. Um, I'll e I'm just gonna email Michael and Ashlyn just okay, to make sure they they know we're in this because I know there was so much. Yeah, good confusion. idea. So hope that no one is now sitting in that um room. Ashlyn. Thank you. Sorry about that, everyone. Hmm. Okay. All right. So I just sent them the meeting link just in case okay. they're trying to get anywhere. I really apologize. I'm really sorry for the confusion. Um, how's everyone doing? You know, we had started check-ins. Okay, great. Uh, I'm gonna take that actually, as I have one real quick thing to say that Kent, I uh, have been working for CSO and I heard that your historical trauma training last week was a huge hit and really amazing. So well, thank you, Dana. Thank you. To they, pass that along. On one hand, they seem very pleased. And on the other hand, as Sandy said, uh, unfortunately they might have opened the door deeper than they thought they would, but Sorry. Yeah, I guess my job was well done, but it exactly. was great. It was a great crowd. Folks were really mm. into digging in. So thank you for that feedback. Oh, really I greatly really appreciate it. Mm. Great. Well, um, I'll kick us off. Um, pursuant to Mayor Narkowitz, March 16th of 2020, emergency declaration and Governor Baker's emergency order that modified the state's open meeting law. Um, our meeting this evening will be conducted remotely over Zoom. Um, there is public access um, and written testimony and comments can be submitted to arts at Northampton ma.gov until 5 p.m. today. So written testimony for today's meeting is over. Um, uh, I'm, I'll offer public comment. Is that, is anyone here for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so to start us off, have uh, Kathy, I'm wondering, do we have a quorum? I think we do. I think you do with the, 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 the ink in mean, the muni. Let me just look over, got up in between all my <laughs> things here. Bear with me. 
I think we do. Um, wait, wait. Actually, I made a list at the last board minutes or council minutes. Sorry, I have to remember um, that of, of voting members. So bear with me. I think I may still ha have that up. So we have uh, voting members, Eamon, Lori, uh, Freeman, uh, you, Danielle, Rachel, Ashlyn, Michael, Kent, Jesse, Dana and Tulani. And I, so I think we do have enough because we're just missing Lori and well and Ashlyn and Michael right now. So is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I think that's a quorum. Cool. Great. So um, have folks had a chance to look at the minutes from y last yep. time's meeting? Okay, um, would anyone like to move to approve the minutes? Or are there any edits or comments? Move to approve. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Great. Thank you. Our minutes are approved. Um, oh, I did forget to announce this meeting is being recorded, um, but it is being recorded. Um, great. Um, if do folks have the agenda open on their screens? If not, I'll just share in the chat once more our norms, our meeting norms for the subcommittee. They're in the chat. Um, if you want to take a refresher, feel free to take a look at those. Um, they're also linked in the agenda. And um, on to our municipal meeting. Um, do we have to, do I, Kathy? Do we have to move to open the municipal? Yeah, I, we so, right. well, I don't know, you know, usually at the beginning, you, 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 the me, well, basically, I just, once you start talking, I put the time down. <laughs> so I guess okay, we probably great. should move so, to start the meeting, but yeah. But I, I think, all right, we're, well, we're, we're, I'll we're, make a motion to open the municipal meeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I, well, I can look at, I, I'm now that I'm taking uh, minutes for a national group, but that's a not for profit. But, um, but I think probably the um, Roberts rules or whatever they are, are remain the same for no matter what. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. okay, so seconded, are we all in favor of opening our municipal mm -hmm. meeting? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Great, thank you. Um, great, so before we move on, so, on our agenda this week, we have our subcommittee updates. And one of the things that I proposed to Brian is that we ask. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to make sure those meetings are still able. To Sorry. Are you breaking up? I can follow you. Yeah. You it's like boy, are you hanging? Turn my video off. Is the audio better now? Yes. Yes. All right. I'm, okay. So just interrupt or put in the chat if you can't hear me again, and I'll try to move closer to the Wi-Fi. Um, I chatted with Brian about appointing subcommittee chairs because we want to make sure those meetings are not, you know, tied up with me or him in the event that one of us can't make it. And I'm so grateful for uh to Tulani for running our um, equity committee meeting last month that I wasn't able to attend. So that was sort of the give thanks to you for keeping that meeting going, um, Tulani. And I guess before we dive into the business of each of these um, subcommittees, I'd love to just go through and ask if anyone would like to chair the committee and the committee chair would be responsible for organizing the meetings of that committee, letting folks know when it is, sending a reminder email, maybe putting it on the calendar. Y'all can decide within the subcommittee what works best for you in terms of structure, but just really keeping it on track, taking any notes, and then reporting back to the group meeting with any updates or, um, or questions or information, whatever. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yeah. Okay, so artist reception. That's a Lori and Freeman group. Freeman, I know Lori's not here. I don't know if, if you want to take it or if the, if you want to discuss it with Lori and then 
let us know next time. You're still muted. You're muted, Freeman. Yep, I, I got that. Thank you. Sorry. Um, let me let you know next time. Okay, great. Biennial. We have Ellen, Lori, Kathy, Zoe, and Karen. So, Kathy, do you want to maybe bring this to the larger group? Um, yeah, why don't I do that? I will bring it to the larger group. That would be good. I know because Ellen would be great and she's a natural, but I think she's going off the council. So and mm. I have a question um, with regards to the chairs. Does it have to necessarily be a member of the Arts Council? For the I don't think so. I think it's just someone who wants to take on that organizing and that leadership okay. role. Okay. And actually, I think it might be depending on the subcommittee and depending mm -hmm. on people's interests. Um, I think it could be a really nice opportunity for for like some of our youth who want to get involved, like if they want to sit on a committee for right. a few months and then take on a leadership role, yeah. we can start think about scaffolding those kind. Of yeah, I agree. Positions. Like I would, I'm glad you said that because Zoe's been incredible on the um, biennial committee, and uh, if she would take it on, it would be a perfect segue. She's she's amazing, so I think it would be great. So I'll bring it up. I'd be glad to. And then it would be great. And then she, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh, that part of, you know, being a council member one way or another would be our responsibility then to, to gather the information and being like the liaison, the board liaison or council liaison and bring back the information to the, um, the full um, council. Yeah, I would even say that Zoe, if Zoe becomes the, the chair of that committee, mm. she can come to meetings to provide update. And if she's interested in staying on, mm -hmm. she can for the other sessions, but she can always come in, provide that update. Wonderful. and leave. I think the only issue is that because of her, she's so tied to Northampton, but technically lives outside of Northampton. So she can't be a voting board member. Gotcha. Okay. But I think she could still provide those updates. No, I think, I think that's a great way to get people involved on a level and they can kind of, uh, you know, uh, to touch the water or feel, um, you know, stick their, their feet in the water and see how it is and stuff like that. It's a great, positive and, and mm -hmm. less stress-free way to, to be welcome, welcomed into the Arts Council. Absolutely. Good point, Kathy. Um, thank you. So cinema, the only other person on the subcommittee for cinema is Jesse. So I don't know if, if you have an interest in being chair, <laughs> then you can, you can be it, Jesse, or we could touch base with Ashlyn and Michael in a separate thread and make the offer there. Uh, let's touch base first. <laughs> good. Somebody might be getting busy. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Um, would anyone like to chair the equity subcommittee? Down the road, I take it on. I am work swamp now from June and July. So I don't, I, if I take on another thing, I'm going to have an aneurysm. Oh my so. God. <laughs> we don't want that, Kent. No, I don't want it. So I'm a typical Kent instead of, I'm backing off of a typical Kent and going, no, I'm happy to look at it if someone gets tired of it after two or three months. Hmm. Thank you. I was going to yeah, yeah, actually ask that too. Like, I don't mind over the summer because my hours are different. But then once the school year rolls around, my hours are going to shift to like late hours. So, all right. So maybe we can to... shift then. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all I'm right. Over the summer, I can go through August. <laughs> okay. Then we can talk about that. That would be a good thing for me then. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much, Lonnie. I just, I'm putting you down at yes. summer care as our summer chair. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Which sounds like the most fun chair. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then- Hot tea and sun hats, yes, all right. Amazing. And then we can do a TBD for fall. And Kent, if you have the capacity in the fall and wanna do yeah. that, wonderful. And if okay. not, then maybe by fall, we'll have some new board members who also right. wanna get involved and, or, or other folks can, can take it on to you. So 
it's not you're not committed you're not locked in yeah. Kent in case things are still busy okay for yeah you. no it's just I got work that that has now come up now that the folks have found the money they 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 thought they didn't have they now have so suddenly now they want a lot so okay so thank you we'll move on great uh grant committee which I think it still says Esther Rachel and Freeman and I'm I think Esther is not with us anymore, um, but I am on this committee. But I will offer my dear friends, Rachel and Freeman, if they would like to, yeah. or if anyone else wants to join this, the grants committee and chair it, you're welcome. Not a chance. <laughs> uh, I am, I am, um... I'm, I'm open to the possibility, especially out of respect for the working world. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, in the interim, until we, till something else emerges, until somebody else can't resist and feels that they must join us on the grant subcommittee, um, I, I'll, I'll take that on. Bye, right, Freeman. Thanks, Freeman. And I'm happy to provide support like if I can make the zoom link and send the calendar invite if you want to tell me when it is and stuff like that well you know that I will be counting on you okay <laughs> <laughs> sounds good sounds good <laughs> and Rachel <laughs> um online communications I think it's kind of like an Eamon and Brian team so I don't know if that's correct. It's just the two of us, <clears throat> as far as I remember. Um, great. Well, I'm just going to put you down, Eamon, and you can add it to your CV if you're so inclined. <laughs> I don't think Brian has enough to do. Maybe he could. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we'll ask him. We'll table it till next time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Poet Laureate is Kathy, Ellen, Kent, and Karen. Silence for me. Kathy, you're muted. Oh, sorry. Yeah, me too. I just feel, I mean, although I, I suspect it, it may, well, of course, we always have so much going on. Gosh. Gosh. And, and Ellen, well, I wonder if that's, I don't know, maybe getting, I don't know if that's something Ellen would like to continue on and not be on the, on the council per se, but maybe just chair that oh. committee. I could ask her. <laughs> Maybe great, I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. great i'll note tbd for that and that might be maybe an opportunity depending on how old our youth poet laureate is mm -hmm. if that happens if that ends up being a high school person like that could be a awesome leadership opportunity for for them yeah. i'm not going to volunteer anyone but <laughs> you know right. great um Public art looks like it's it's Jesse and Ashlyn, so we might have to have a conversation about that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll speak with Ashlyn offline. Um, and we still haven't actually had a meeting yet. It's mostly been uh, in Brian's um, circle around all the things that are happening. So we'll talk offline. Okay. And then school committee is Freeman, Lori, Tulani. So unless either of you wants to jump in and take it, I know you both have other commitments, maybe chat with Lori and report back next month. Yeah. Sounds good. Lori's not here. Make her chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kathy, you're in charge of the minutes. So I know that's, oh yeah, <laughs> I know. Like that's get that gets me um, already involved so but I will I will admit I'll be glad to chair the volunteer committee so wonderful. I'm the only one there but that's fine that's wonderful okay great. great thanks everyone for walking through that with me and now we can dive into committee updates um it looks like we don't have any updates for the artist reception Kathy do you have anything from the biennial no I mean just that things are happening you know um mm -hmm. We're getting questions from the artists and just trying to um, wade through the questions. And um, uh, Zoe's taking on a little bit more active role in terms of sort of 
getting the paintings in and we're working and I think Zoe's going to do this in terms of documenting and how to um, you know for the jurist etc with the, with with the work so she's actually doing a lot more with regards to this so it's been really godsend having her on the committee fantastic yeah, she's great it's great to be here thank you mm -hmm. Cinema. Jesse, do you have a cinema update? Um, I do not. I haven't touched base with Brian about what the um, future of the cinema looks like this summer. I know that there, there was something two times ago that he was mentioning about it, um, maybe going to uh, Holly Street Mm -hmm. um, as mm -hmm. a as a semi permanent location, rather than mm -hmm. uh, needing to set it up for um, you know outdoor presentations and hauling all the equipment around, um, but beyond that, I am unsure where things are at. Mm -hmm. I don't have an update other than what we heard last time as well, which was that if things continue as they are. Um, in terms of what's going on with COVID and vaccines, that the earliest um, we would move into outdoor cinema would be August, and that there would be an outdoor program for possibly August and September, but it's not finalized yet. So we'll probably hear an update from Brian next month. Cool. Um, equity committee, do any of the folks who attended that subcommittee meeting have anything they'd like to report out? It was just me and Kent. <laughs> 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 so we have nothing. <laughs> no. Okay. I do have an update. Um, I heard back from Jan and Gabe, who were the equity trainers that met with us. Yes, good. And they had they have three black colleagues that they had invited to co-facilitate those presentations. Mm -hmm. um, and each of those colleagues uh, does not have the capacity to support the project this summer. Mm. Um, so Gabe and Jan both very respectfully and apologetically um, suggested that we work with other trainers because they they didn't want to read lead DEAI training without you know representation from their their colleagues who are also doing anti-racism work um so that said Jan is in the process of compiling a list of folks who might be available to share I also um uh had a meeting with one of the board members for historic the Northampton Historic Society that board has been undergoing a series of DEI trainings and team building workshops. And one of their board members really, who, who I work with, um, recommended their facilitators. So I'm going to reach out to, to those folks. And then I, I also welcome any other suggestions that folks have. Kent, I know we already reached out to folks that you recommended and people are just spread thin this summer. But if you mm -hmm. know of anyone else that you would recommend, um, yeah. You know, we're serious about doing it and Brian, you know, put money aside for us to do it. It's it's mm -hmm. just about finding folks who have capacity and, you know, we want to be respectful of that too. You know, people are mm -hmm. being mm -hmm. called in mm -hmm. out there's budget and, you know, we might well, have let's to- see, Let's that. see what the list is. And then in our next committee meeting, we can chat about it. I mean, look at who it is. I know the Historical Society I mean, uh, Northampton, uh, yeah, Historical Society. I mean, I, I'm, yeah, let's talk about that. Okay, sounds good. Can I just ask for the point of the minutes? Um, Gabe, how do you spell Gabe's first name? Gabriel? Oh, Gabriel, Gabe. Yeah. Right. Okay, Gabe, okay. I just want to make sure I heard it. Yeah. And then Jan, their name is spelled J-X-H-N. Right. And the X is could be substitute any vowel. So you could call them John, you can call them Jan, you can call them June, Jean, Jen. It's like Arabic. Yeah. 
Thanks. I appreciate that. Thank you. Of course. And Gabe's last name is Hall, H-A-L-L, and Jan's last name is Martin, M-A-R-T-I-N. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to provide that update. It's, it's sort of a bummer um, because I was really hoping that we could get a lot of these trainings underway for the summer. And, um, you know, it's, it's not something that I haven't been pushing pretty constantly and emailing about constantly. And it's not something that I'm mean, obviously Brian also has been mm -hmm. doing a lot of work to try to push it through. And it feels like we're not moving forward with it. Um, but I just want to name the circumstances and that it's still, you know, very much a priority and we're just working with people that are really burnt out. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and um, there's high demand too. So yeah. I think that's important to realize. There's yeah. High demand. Absolutely. Um, oh, but when we do it, we want to do it right. So if we have to wait and make sure we're doing it with the right folks, Mm -hmm. in the room, then I think that it's worth it um, mm -hmm. for us to do that. Amen. Yeah, agreed. Thanks for, thanks for putting the work into, in on it and yep. continuing to, to try to get people. Thank you. I agree. Thank you all. Okay. Um, grant round. Rachel or Freeman, do you want to share an update from what we worked on yesterday? Mm-hmm. Well, so much uh, longer ago than yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it was very <pretty> early. <laughs> um, oh, Rachel. Hi. Hey. Um, so, uh, uh, Freeman, do you want to take, Freeman, Chair Freeman of the Grant Committee, do you want to take this? <laughs> that wasn't as smooth as it could have been, Rachel, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we we met um, and we looked at the applicants for the COVID relief um, grant that we were going to fund. Um, I can't remember the number that we had to start off with, but it was somewhere around eighty something, right? Is that correct, uh, Rachel or Danielle? Do you remember exactly? It was. I'll look it up now, but yeah, it was in the eighties. And we had six, and we ended up uh, in the list that we've generated. We had sixty-six that we've we've felt met, met the qualifications that we had stipulated, um, and we had some questions about some of them that we were going to run by Brian. I, I don't know, Danielle, if you wanted to to mention any of those people. Uh, to the board or shall we just run them by Brian and see what we come up with and, or do people have questions um, at all? Um, I think it's worth noting, Rachel, do you have the spreadsheet up? Yeah. Would you paste that the language for, um, for the eligibility into the chat? Yeah. And when was the deadline for that? The deadline to apply was May twenty fifth or something. Hmm. Was it May twentieth? Yeah, something like that. It was in the minutes. Okay. Yeah, I think oh, the wow. deadline passed. I actually think it was May fifteenth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I yeah, I think it was May fifteenth, but then Brian, if I remember, from, it, from right? the minutes. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little bit, a couple of days after that. Because I think, if I remember correctly, that's why. Yeah, I just did. I knew it was added but i don't remember how much yeah yeah it was just he had a couple more days because he wanted to make sure something in terms of getting the publicity out so the publicity was certainly out we got a lot of mm -hmm. applications right. um and we basically were very generous in our interpretation so the eligibility requirement thank you rachel for putting that in the chat is the requirement is just i'm an individual artist, teaching artist, or arts organizer working in an artistic discipline who has facilitated a project program workshop or exhibition in Northampton, Florence, or Leeds in the past three years. I'm experiencing loss of income that's impacted my livelihood and or ability to carry out my artistic and programmatic mission, and I'm 18 years or older. Mm -hmm. So there are degrees to which people um, met every single aspect of that requirement, but if they met it at a base, we basically said yes eligible mm 
Mm -hmm. Um, and internally, I think we had some conflict about, you know, some people that do a whole lot and are really, really involved and solely rely on arts for income in the community versus others who sort of participate in minor ways. Mm -hmm. That said, we didn't, we didn't ask folks to rate. Mm -mm. Oh, good point. We didn't feel it was our place to Mm -hmm. rate anyone's level of involvement or eligibility. So it was just a yes or no eligibility, which meant that a lot of folks who applied were eligible. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. um, there were, we had some questions about one or two remaining um, uh, participants who they themselves uh, checked yes to this box, but in the section where we asked them to say what they've done in the past three years, didn't quite articulate it as well as it didn't, didn't really articulate their impact on the community. Hmm. Um, so with, with some others, we were able to do some research or we just know that we know their work, we've seen their work, we looked them up and we were able to see, yes, you did indeed do these things. You just didn't articulate it in the mm-hmm. grant application and we awarded them. We mm-hmm. didn't penalize for not you know giving a thorough response, mm-hmm. but there are two, um, I think there are two current applicants that we were gonna just follow up with Brian to see like, hey, like, this person doesn't really articulate their involvement. Can you vouch and say that they are in fact, you know, Mm -hmm. so one of them is an artist, a musician who's based in Hadley, who's a member of, uh, Carrie and I, the -hmm. band. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to like rake our brains, rack our brains to see if they had like performed in Northampton and weren't sure. So we're going to ask Brian that if anyone is like very familiar with the kind of mm. punk or indie music scene and wants to weigh in, we can yeah. <laughs> um, follow up. And I don't remember, Rachel or Freeman, do you remember the one other that we were going to ask about? I don't remember. Mm. Um, punk I music think... scene seems more East Hampton, though. Yeah, I have seen Karine, I think, in North like not totally clear on if it was in Northampton or kind of on a border but they do Mm -hmm. a lot of the house shows around here Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I feel like that I have the sense they're active in the music scene throughout the valley I can't quantify as easily how much of that is Northampton specific though Mm -hmm. I I agree I know them from I have friends and yeah, the house shows. I mean, so they're not like venue venues per se, but that scene is extremely portable and extremely active. So, you know, I'd be curious to know if they're on, you know, SoundCloud or something like, you know, something that they at least put together, but they're, they are a real band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, they are definitely professional level as a band. I think like they played Gateway City Arts. I think they had some national press coverage this year. So they're actively working for sure, but the location is like- right. You know who would also would know would be Peter, Peter McQuillan, mm-hmm. because he's part of that scene, so. Yeah, definitely. I think the other person was Jennifer Carr. Yeah. Um, am, am, I remembering, am, am I remembering right, Rachel? Do you remember the, 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 the pop-up? Uh, pop-up market. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a question about that. And I think that was her. And that was a question. So these are specifically artist relief grants and Mm -hmm. we, we are not using these grants to fund projects Mm -hmm. and the way this particular application was written made it seem as though the grant was sort of tied to that Mm pop-up project. Mm-hmm. So that was so that might be something that like Brian actually just reaches out to this applicant. Um, but to those clarify. were really- exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. But if we award everyone, including these two, we're looking at about two hundred, a little bit more than two hundred dollars a person. Um, we're giving away, I think, a total of thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, just over. Yep. Um, so they're small, but hopefully they'll have something of an impact on folks. Um, yeah, I can, uh, it it was 85 total applicants, 
but I can share a few other numbers, which is um, of the 85, about five were duplicate applications. So those were removed. Uh, so that's somebody who just submitted the same application twice. Um, so that they are not removed entirely, just one of their applications is removed. Um, then we had about three that were disqualified just by location, including two from the United Kingdom because there's a <laughs> in there. Um, and uh, and then Bra uh, another thing that um, Brian made the uh, call on was that this particular round did not fund organizations. It was specific for individuals. Uh, individual artists or art producers. Mm -hmm. So we had a handful of organizations that were removed as well. So um, going from 85 to 65, a lot of those were just kind of removed because of one of those three reasons. Um, mm -hmm. And as Danielle and Freeman said, we were pretty generous that if they fill, filled those eligibility requirements, they, they are in the running for the grant. So mm -hmm. that's where we're left. Cool. What was last year's? It was around 300 or 350. Was to, am I remembering that correctly? That's what I heard, right? It's about 335, but we had raised $30,000 or $33,000. So um, the fundraising efforts brought less in this year. And I think about we also started with less. About $1,500, I think, this year. Okay. Okay. Anything else for grants? Next on our list is board membership. Um, I don't have an update on that. We do have vacancies, so please feel free to invite folks to apply. I don't know if anyone else has updates on board membership or questions. Okay, online that I didn't ask earlier. I think do we have a guest here. I don't recognize I see somebody in that during the minutes um, during the meeting. I didn't have a question in terms of a guest or oh. somebody considering board membership, Miriam. Um, no, thank you. <laughs> but I was sent a link from Brian in connection with a request that we're making for support for a public art project. Um, and so I'm Hoping that's on the agenda somewhere, and I and it sounded like I should be here. Thank yes, you. Yes, it is great. Thanks. Um, I, in terms of uh, board membership, uh, a few meetings ago, um, I reached out to um, our landlords over at Belly of the Beast, who own the Tibetan restaurant. Mm -hmm. Previous to us, to see if they uh, if they knew anybody in the Tibetan community who would be interested, um, haven't heard back. Um, I could, you know, it's been a it's been a minute, and I could follow up and see um, if if he was able to uh, hear from anyone, or if it just kind of mm. fell off. But I can mm -hmm. I can follow up. Okay. Mm. Thanks, Jesse. Mm. Um, I, I, I don't know if I have to make a motion to this, but I would love to move public art up because I, I didn't realize Miriam was here for that. But if we could go to public art and hear yes. from um, Jesse and Miriam. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good. Rather than make Miriam sit through a whole bunch yeah, of- Yeah, I'm so people. sorry, Miriam. <laughs> yeah. yes. thank, thank you so much. And it's it's been a real pleasure, so no no complaints from me. Thank you, though. I don't know if you want me to talk, or if Je maybe Jesse should. Um, I I just again have uh, not much to catch everybody up on. Um, I could kind of update based on mm -hmm. Brian's last round of emails. Um, so, Miriam, if you if you kind of want to start, maybe um, that'll have some questions that I might be able to answer. You want me to just give a summary of what we're doing? Uh, I, we I don't know what in, I don't know what information you all have received, but we are making an application to do a mural on um, 
sort of a, a short wall along the underpass of the 91 overpass on Route 9. Um, and so I don't, you know, it's right near the new roundabout. Um, and they've, I think, finished the work on the retaining walls. Mm -hmm. This would just be like, it's maybe waist high at its highest along the, along the whole over, uh, overpass of 91. Mm -hmm. And we, um, I'm working with Kim Carlino, who I understand has done a lot of mm -hmm. public art and murals. Um, I had first reached out to the um, art teachers at JFK, um, hoping that they would be interested in getting some student involvement and they really wanted to work with Kim. So uh, we reached out to her, mm -hmm. um, mostly in light of sort of the divisive issues around race actually at JFK. Um, I was just really hoping, and I live around the corner and I've had kids in the public school system. Um, and it just had occurred to me that it would be really nice kind of unifying thing for the kids in the school to have a voice and to, you know, find expression through art. I am totally not an artist. I'm a family lawyer. So yeah. none of this is anything I've done before. Um, but Kim is more familiar with the process. So um, we've had a meeting. I've had a number of meetings with Kim. We need to apply to Mass DOT because the property is owned by the state. And naturally, they require that we do everything, have everything ready to go um, as part of our application. So. We actually have an art teacher also from the high school because she was interested in joining as well. Um, we were just approved for a grant from NEF, um, from the Northampton Education Foundation to fund um, basically Kim over time for the teachers and for supplies. And um, what else? Kim has done a mock-up of an idea which would include like a kind of Northampton is unity theme um, she's interested in taking these 157 blocks, which apparently she counted. Um, it's a really hideous wall, I have to say. I don't know if you've driven by, it's really ugly. Um, and so her idea is to paint every block a different color, but in something of a rainbow spectrum. And then to work with students around the use of color and design um, and maybe some words or language around a unifying theme and sort of a welcoming at, the, at this location, which is kind of the entrance of Northampton. Um, so we're at a point where we're ready to submit to the state and they have all of their requirements. And one of them is to have the approval and support of the municipality, including the police um, department, which I haven't done yet. So I'll go to them after um, your committee. Um, I don't know what else, what other information you might want to know. I'm happy to answer questions if you have anything else. Yeah, I, um, I had a question just around the concept of Northampton unity. And as you said, the conflicts that, that have arisen in the schools, is there, how, what kind of conversations have kids from the global majority in those schools what kind of conversations are they having around this concept of unity and how are their voices being amplified? Right, and so to be honest, I'm really trying to set the stage for them to work with their art teachers and with this artist. So I have not come into this with any agenda or idea of my own so much as trying to um, ask these folks to work with the students to amplify their voices. Mm -hmm. um, my understanding from the art teachers at JFK is that they have um, done some work, that the art teachers have done some um, discussions and work around identity mm -hmm. and have sort of come at this issue of um, you know, diversity and, and looking at issues of race and, and in a historical perspective a little bit, but looking at individual identity. And so, I got this, so my understanding is that they would like to sort of go from some of those discussions to bring in this way of expressing um, uh, the students' voices. But like I said, not being an artist, I'm leaving this up to, so what's gonna happen is Kim, um, the consultant, 
artist would come in and do a number of workshops with you know any of the students that are interested at JFK and to do it with their teachers I think you know probably I don't know a couple you know two or three workshops it, it, because of the pandemic also and mm -hmm. time constraints it's probably something that would be happening after school it didn't mm -hmm. sound like they would be able to do anything off-site at least for the foreseeable future um, as part of the school day so um, it's it, we're trying to make it something that's open to anybody we lost you hmm. oh. miriam you cut off the last few hmm. words of your can't hear you we lost you miriam we can't hear you I'm sorry. I think I might have my earbud must have lost power. I'm really sorry. That's okay. There we you go. Out. It's not your fault. I was gonna say. I can hear you now. Talking. I don't even know if I was heard or. <laughs> All right. If I had a question. I'm happy to answer a question. I would love to amplify. Huh? Being one of the organizers and producers, it's a lot of work and. I'm grateful to you for helping pull it together. One of the things that I read in the community involvement and support section that is in one of the templates shared, and also folks flag me if I need to turn my camera off if I get choppy again, um, is that there will be mentorship roles for the students who are working within this project. And I'm wondering, one, if that's something that you could share a little bit more about. And then two, I know Kim's work and think she is phenomenal and will do a great job leading these workshops. Um, my question or maybe opportunity um, to, to suggest is um, whether any artists of color have been brought into the process. I know that um, Chelvaniya Gabriel and Mari Champagne both worked on the Youth Empowerment Arts Collective mural on the bike path. And I, I think you've been in touch with those organizers. Um, and I just think like if we're talking about unity and it's coming from a place of, of racism and anti-racism, it's it might be important to have black artists as part That's of that. That's my point. Or at least black you know, mentors at the very least so that these kids feel comfortable rather than being shoved into to saying something or not really being able to process how they feel to create a piece of art that really is reflective of what it was is that they need. Absolutely. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Um, I had actually, before I contacted Kim, I had contacted this um, youth empowerment art collective because I just fell in love with this you know they did this mural around the corner um, and was hoping to do something of a sister thing or you know to connect out mm -hmm. here you know out on the roadway um, but to be honest I didn't hear back from them and it maybe a month went by and I sent them another and I think it was just a chat I just didn't hear from them so I didn't think they were interested I didn't know if I didn't know anything about their organization and then in the meantime connected with Kim through the teachers because that was mm -hmm. who they wanted to work with but I agree I did not want it to just be well, me and Kim coming in on an issue around diversity and um so I did actually finally hear from somebody in the art collective and then went back to the teachers. And so um, we're just, it, I'm, not, I'm not sort of dismissing involvement with them in terms of the suggestion around working with um, like having these mentor roles in the high school. All I know from the teacher at the, the art teacher at the high school was that um, I, I think it was her suggestion to, to do this as a mentor um, situation like high school versus junior, you know, the middle school, but mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's something that we've talked about, um, but, you know, it's something that I think we just need to, 
to keep talking about in terms of how to make sure that, you know, whoever's sort of doing this work, that there's representation and that there's um, a way to be welcoming and involving, especially if that is what the, what the message is. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm just, I station before this with some friends out they had a similar they had a school where they brought in oh i'm missing what you're saying yeah we're, we're not hearing you can't you're you're coming in and out hear me now yeah yeah wow this is uh i'll kill my video how's that good for the moment Okay, good for the moment. Anyway, I'm just saying that I think it's really important as these kids, these Lakota kids were saying in this meeting, and it was just fascinating them to say, you know, how, how do we express ourselves if someone doesn't really understand where it is that our expressions come from? And so I think I love the mentorship idea, um, which would really be a great way for high school kids to give something back. But I do think it's really important to bring in artists of the global majority to work with those kids who also represent that. So it'd be like bringing in, you know, all men to work with a group of young women, you know, it's just, it's something a little lopsided. I, I agree. Um, and so this is something that I hope that we can continue to, you know, that we can work on and make sure that we're inclusive in that way. So Miriam, is there a budget to pay some of the artists that are the, the supervisor artists or the professional artists that are coming in to work with students? The budget that the way that NEF works, I used to be on their board a number of years ago. Um, and the, what was approved was um, funding that includes um, paying payment for the consultant at her rate, her supplies, and then hourly funds for the teachers. I think their paid time is going to be, I mean, it's just a, a few hours. It wasn't a lot of time that they were seeking. Um, and NEF has like a set hourly rate for them. Awesome. I wonder, I wonder if it would be possible to bring on, I don't know if it's possible to apply to NEF for funding or if it's something that you could ask us to fund or depending when it happens, if this is something you could apply for a grant for in the fall. Sounds like it'd be an amazing opportunity for a grant. Timing, not sure. Um, uh, I don't know if there's like a River Valley Market grant, but I would love to recommend either Mars or Naya as another consulting artist. Like the, I found yeah. that they're phenomenal to work with. They they did lead the Youth Empowerment Art Collective. I don't know if they're in the collective or if they just were consulting artists. Um, I've worked with them. I work in an art museum in my day job and I've worked with Naya's them. Naya's dope, workshops. yeah. Um, Mars and they had, sorry, Mars had I had been in touch with Mars um, more recently, and I think um, they are part of that. Or I thought that they were part of that um, empowerment collective. Yeah. So, so my like, I want to support it. Like, I am on board. I think it should absolutely happen. And I just my one thing that I think would make it mm -hmm. as strong a project as possible is to make sure that there are like artists of color that are also consultants and getting paid. And I think, right. and like, I'm happy to help connect you with, with folks if, if Mars is not able to or whatever. Um, and also like, I think everyone who we work with would be happy to like put our heads together to think about how to make sure that they're getting paid also if that NEF grant is only for what you've applied for, if there's no way to change that or apply for another one or, or whatever. Um, and I do but know that I'm, I'm, I'm starting to, to work with NEFA. Questions if can. Thank you. I'm starting to work with NEFA and they're starting to fund spatial justice grants that are around issues like this too. So it's another possibility. I mean, I like, I love the idea. I, when I read through all the material, it's just that my concern is to make sure that we're not shoehorning kids from the global majority into being all nice and rosy when that's not really going to be anything about unity as much as keeping them quiet. So I just really want, I think this is a golden opportunity for Northampton to really do something very wonderful. And your project sounds wonderful. So I just really want to make sure that that's a part of it. I, I really appreciate that. 
um, and I'm and I will um, take this back to you know I'm I'm playing this awkward role of trying to make something happen and coordinate, mm -hmm. but to not um, overstep either into <laughs> the realm of what I know you know of which I know mm -hmm. nothing, but but I want to get the right players involved. So I'm all, I'm sort of it's easy to go to the people that we know. And so teachers say, okay, this is who we know. And it's like, okay, but I would like, you know, so that mm -hmm. was when I originally contacted this organization. But, mm -hmm. um, you can say the arts council is making you reach out to people that's <laughs> right. who aren't on the rock. You could say, right. you blame yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> and also Miriam, I work with Valley Creates through community Valley. foundation. So we might be able to say, we'll, you know, if we can get the arts council to to promote this part, we'll promote this part and to push that way. You know, if you have some orgs behind you, would be helpful. And I think we certainly are here. Yeah, I think that'd be wonderful. I don't think that I'm able to go back to NEF honestly at this point. Um, there, they have actually a, a sep another concern around. Um, whether the state's going to approve oh. us doing the work on their property um, as a public art project. So they are also asking us to have a backup plan, which is fine. I which mean, fine. I think we would be looking to do that at one or both of the schools maybe. Um, right. So um, that was sort of something that they had asked us to do to, and I, you know, I don't know what that process is to get permission to do a mural at the schools. Um, mm. It sounded like from the state that process takes a couple can take a couple months, and their grant's going to require that we complete our work by June of 2022. So I might give it a month or two and kind of hope that we can do it here at the, you know at the location where we had initially mm -hmm. intended, but. It would not really be a disappointment if we had to do it at the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it would get a little bit more, there'd be more visibility. Yeah, it would be cooler for the kids too. I think it would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, Miriam, this group also, I believe, has permission to authorize city use. So I don't know if you've looked, I don't know if you've done this already with Brian, but there might be some sites that are city property that the mayor would have to approve, but we like, also have a little bit more, I don't know, say in. So that might be something to look at if the state approval doesn't come through. I'm confident that the state approval would. Um, I'm just reviewing the, I don't know if you've seen Mir um, Miriam, the letter of support that Brian and I use as a template, but we basically go through all of the state DOT's requirements and we say this project meets, and we list out every requirement. And folks, I did put that in the chat if, if you're curious. I, um, I'm sorry. No, yeah, go ahead. He had given me a sample and I wrote up a proposed letter that was actually for your signature and for Brian, I don't know if it was for your um, signature and Brian's signature. Um, and it did, it sort of addressed and said, yeah, we comply with those state requirements. Hmm. Um, so I guess is uh, is what you're saying, like if we wanted to use um, a bat, if we wanted to pursue as an alternative the school or one of the school sites, does that application then also come to this committee as well? Is that what I understand? I don't know about the schools, but there are city properties that I know, for example, were previously approved for the mural for diversity on the bike path. And they opted to do it where they did it, which actually is state property, not city property. But there were city sites that were approved for that mural um, that I'm sure Brian can share a list of those if you wanted a backup that was city property. So I believe there's a location along the bike path um, near the skate park, which currently is, is used as an encampment, like might not be the spot for, for this project might be like further conversation might have to happen, but um, there, and there are other city locations that Brian has a list of. Okay. I had a question in terms of the state, um, state whatever uh, agreement or approval. Um, 
how was it before that the the other group got the state approval and it did it take that long or and, and and or is it possible to and i'm just thinking out loud here to kind of get support from one of our state reps or somebody in terms of a letter of support or something around this grant well i don't know if that would either facilitate state state approval or what i'm just thinking out loud here i've wondered the same thing i don't know how long it took them yeah. to do it it must not have taken that long because mm. they just did it like in October maybe or November last year. I just don't remember. So um, it was a little bit of a tricky process. Um, there's a booklet of city properties that um, have locations, map GPSs and images. And we had approved a city location for the mural that had a picture with it. and. Uh, the group actually misinterpreted where that location was and started work on a state property, not a city property. So um, they had already started, I don't, I'm sorry, this is being recorded. I'm not sure if this is like common knowledge, but they had already kind of started the process of working at a state site and not a city site. And we expedited the approval process, which I think just meant sending it all out and hoping that it wouldn't get washed over and it wasn't, it was approved. But um, I I also know that the site that they used is not visible to car traffic. So the, the difference between the two projects is that this is a bike path and it was very removed from car traffic. You can't even see it when you're driving on Damon Road. The, the project that is being proposed here is visible to car traffic, which I think is the only concern for, for the state and DOT is that they don't want anything that could obstruct traffic or be a distraction. To be honest, I don't think that this mural is any more distracting than any billboard on the highway, mm -hmm. um, but that would be the thing that they would have to assess, which yeah. might, could take longer. But I, I, have, I am not at all concerned that, you, I don't have any doubts about the feasibility of the project being completed by June, 2022, even if you had to find an alternate, even if you got a, didn't get approval from the state and had to find an alternate city location, I think that that process would be very quick. So. It seems, and it also seems like it would be a great candidate for our fall grant round, which I'm gonna just keep repeating. <laughs> um, um, and that funding goes into effect January, 2022 and can be used any time in the following fiscal year. So if you decided that you did wanna execute it next spring um, with like augmented funds potentially from, from the Arts Council, then that could be another, or even in a part two, right? Like. It's another opportunity, um, but yeah. Does that answer, Kathy? <laughs> Muted, Kathy. No, sorry. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I was just trying to. Now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so, thank you, Danielle. Um, uh, I, do we need to vote on this project as an arts? I think. Um, and also uh, approve of the letter of support from mm -hmm. Northampton Arts Council mm -hmm. for MassDOT. Yes, but I want. I think I think we do have to vote on it, and I think we can vote with contingencies, right? Like we can vote and say we want to hear back, and we can vote and and we want to hear mm -hmm. like about the things that came up. But before we do that, I just I know I asked a lot of questions and talked a lot, so I want to make sure other people have the chance to talk to Miriam about it. So I just um, coincidentally happened to have my conversation with Des Caldwell this morning and Michelle and Emma, the two art teachers mm. at JFK, because Tuani, Lori and I have been reaching out and we'll talk about that when we talk about the school subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that they're very excited about this project. Um, and I actually was wondering and I, and I emailed Kim uh, and Kim told me that Miriam, you might be at the mm -hmm. meeting tonight, uh, but I was wondering if there was an opportunity to actually involve a, another art form in this project. And this is related mm -hmm. in a way to what Ken and Danielle are bringing up and maybe a poet, poet laureate, maybe there's an opportunity to connect this because words is such an important part of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was thinking about both our own grant round, 
but also about you know other opportunities mm -hmm. like involving the youth poet laureate yes. and our poet laureate um, in these projects as well. So um, I'm I'm I'd love to explore this with you and work with you um, with this and <clears throat> and I have some really good um, I had a really good conversation with <clears throat> Des and the, the art teachers about exploring some other things and I'll get into that as soon as we talk about the school subcommittee, but all have a bearing on, on this as well. And an opportunity for the Arts Council, because that's what, what's, that's what Talani and Lori and I are looking for, is the ways to support the arts in the schools. So it's great to see you and to meet you and to know about this project. I think it's got tremendous opportunity. Thank you so much. Mm. I, I, I think that's a lovely idea to add. Mm. Um, that involvement and mm. and to yeah. explore other ways to to bring in the community. Yeah. Any other questions? No, but I just wanted to say, Miriam, I didn't realize until as you were talking that please say hi to Andrew for me. <laughs> oh, you know. I'm sorry, Kathy, you look familiar. And I think, I think we've met, I think you worked. I used to work, yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to see him at Stop and Shop a lot too, but we worked together. So please give him my warm regards. Oh, I certainly will, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank you all. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the um, letter of support from the Arts Council to the state, to the OT, which would give this group the green light to continue at the site. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have a question. Can I, even if I'm just on Muni, also vote for something like this? Not that it really, I mean, we have a quorum, I mean, already yeah. majority, but. Yeah, can, can we vote with the provisions that we talked about? Mm -hmm. This is um, just for the um, letter of support right now, right, Danielle? Not yeah, this is just, so, so this is just for the State Department of Transportation to ask that they approve use of this site. Oh, okay. But yeah. it's not for us to approve the project. Okay, cool. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So all in favor. Great. Okay. So that passes. We will definitely send our letter of support, Miriam. And I would encourage you, once you have that with our like digital signatures, um, I would encourage you to share that with any local counselors, city counselors, the mayor, state reps, and just build your packet, your application packet and include all the letters. Like I can't, like if the state gets a packet of 10 letters saying we want this, unless it's truly a, a health and safety hazard for, for vehicles, um, I imagine they would be excited to support it. Um, okay, now we have to vote on whether or not to like endorse the, the, the project design, which honestly, it might be something that we could return to later once there is state approval, since it sounds like that's really the first step. But um, I'm happy to move to vote on that as is, vote on that with provisions, if anyone else wants to make a motion for how to proceed. Um, yeah, I don't know if we can, if we can do like a provisional support, um, barring, uh, you know, further, um, Further conversation or further involvement involvement with um, uh, who's going to be part of this, um, as we as we kind of talked about earlier. I think that it's it's definitely important to have uh, more voices involved, and um, I I uh, Freeman, I love the idea of getting poets poets involved too. My only question around that is um, if there's a question from the state about safety, I feel like it would be around um, verbiage, around actual words being written. 
Um, yeah, I'm not. I would. I wasn't thinking of. Hap I. I think you're right. I think you're. I'm sure you're right about that. I was thinking of it as being part of the process. You know, the, the oh, work, yeah. work with the students. Yeah, I think that's great, and I think at the very least that would be wonderful. And if the state is open to language, um, which is part of this um, uh, proposal anyway, um, is having words involved. Um, if they do come and approve that, then it could be something that we could, um, you know, get the, you could get the poets more involved in the actual, um, you know, what's being written if, if everyone on board is wanting to do that, if the kids want to engage the poet in that manner. Um, I, I love that idea. So at the end of the day, I guess, provisionally, Danielle, I, I'm making a thing to provisionally vote for this with those caveats. I'll second a provisional vote to support the project pending hearing back from Miriam or someone else who Miriam appoints to come talk to us about um, updated community involvement and representation particularly with um, consulting artists, paid consulting artists, particularly paid consulting artists of color. Right, of color. Does that, all in favor? <laughs> okay, uh, great. So <laughs> that, that passes, Miriam, we're, uh, we're like obviously like really, I don't, I don't know, obviously, I'm obviously very excited about the project and happy to connect. And I, I know Ken volunteered to connect you with organizations as well. So feel free to, I'll work with Brian on adding our signature. I think it's like mine and Brian's signature to that letter and sending that out to you. That should be what you need for state approval. And then please, please be in touch with us about the, the concept development and involvement however and whenever it feels right to you um, in the process. Sounds great. Thank you so much. And I think, Danielle, I have your email. I don't think I have Kent's at, at this point, but I'm happy to be Danielle, uh, I give Danielle permission to give it to you. OK, okay. great. All right. Great. Can, can, you, can you get from the chat? Yep. Oh, OK. Here, I'll just put it in the chat. Then you'll have it. I got to find the bottom of the chat. <laughs> um, okay, great. J Kent. J K E N T A L E X at gmail.com. That's awesome. And if anybody, you know, wants to be in touch with me, that's great. And I will certainly be reaching out in the next probably week or two once we get these applications out. Um, cool. I really appreciate all the advice and all the thoughtfulness. Um, you know, from me starting out like, hey, that's a really boring wall. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning a lot and it's just, it's, it's been really nice to connect with everybody, so. Thank you so much for making it happen. Yeah, thanks, thanks for doing it. And thank I can you, yes. make a graceful exit and let you get back to the rest of your work. <laughs> Have thank a good you. night, Miriam, thanks. Thank Bye. you, you too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, Kathy? Oh, I know. I just, I worked with her husband and I, did, I made the, the connection a little bit midway through. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Andrew's wife. <laughs> so anyway. Um, great. So on to online communications. Any updates on that front? Uh, Brian and I have been in touch with our uh, designer who's working on the new logo. Um, I believe Brian has given our latest set of feedback to him and we should be getting like a revised, almost like 90% final version. And then we can uh, bring it to the whole group. It's exciting. Yeah, it'd be nice to have something new and a little bit modern that we can use for a lot of purposes. Yeah. Even keeping in mind all the different uses that we could envision it and not envision yet. Um, and it'd be really nice to have Great, thank it. you. Do we have any updates on the Poet Laureate?
I think we went through that, didn't we? You're muted, Kathy. Back and forth between the screen, so bear with me. Yeah, well, I think, you know, part of the thing is that the call, I think it's June 15th, so. Um, and we did we did have a, have a query from a family member um, right. who's, um, child is, and uh, who's from Goshen and whose child is in the Northampton schools. And they were all excited about being, um, would like to be considered. However, it doesn't, it falls outside the realm of our original um, uh, criteria or for the application. And we decided not to, I mean, at this point um, to, to hold on that application because it is, first of all, it's not part, it wasn't part of the original criteria. And then if we change the, the rules midway, we'd have to get back to other people. It, right. it just got too complicated. And plus it's our first, you know, it's honestly, first year. First, yes, exactly. That's our first poet laureate, youth poet laureate. And we want to be able to, to signal, you know, honor somebody from Northampton. And I'm sure we have somebody from Northampton that would be able to qualify. And it, there's, there's both symbolic gesture, but also just you know, being fair, a sense of justice to everybody who applied. Kathy, how old is the how old is that person from oh, Goshen? I don't know, to be honest with you. I we don't know. Remember. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a mom that wrote in for yeah. her daughter. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm going to jump in with a question. Um, mm -hmm. That that brings up an interesting question when dealing with school things mm -hmm. um, about that separation between where one lives and where they go to school. Because if we're not necessarily just around the Poet Laureate, but if we're talking about engaging with Northampton area schools, what does that mean for where they physically live? And I don't know that there's uh, an answer for that right now, but I guess I'm just uh, stating it to for us to keep it in mind moving forward around other things. I think keeping that in mind is really important. I think we lucked out making it easy for us with the poet lawyer. We said must reside in Northampton, Leeds, or Florence and go to school in the area. So that that residence is the important piece for us that allowed us to go, okay, this is what we said we do. I think for the other things that that wording has to be really precise or open-ended on purpose, right? And that one side, and once you put it out there, you don't change it. Thank you, Kent. Mm -hmm. But it would does be- make, Does I that mean, make sense yeah. to you, Jesse? No, I think it definitely does. Um, I don't know that I knew the wording was that exact, or if I did, I don't remember um, mm -hmm. that I did. But uh, yeah, I and and again, this is just kind of like spurring in my in my mm -hmm. head this, okay. the idea around future mm -hmm. projects and that separation. That's not something that I think about right. um, when approaching certain things. That there mm -hmm. would be something that would be school specific. Mm -hmm. People that would be school specific in Northampton schools, but yet live outside of the area that we usually right. um, call, you know, our, mm -hmm. for for projects for us. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's, that's a good well, point. And I think that those are, those are some really good thoughts and conversation, you know, to, to talk about, but also when you're part of a government, uh, so not governing, but, you know, you know, judging, you need to be able to, or even putting out the call for applications to have that in mind. So it's yep. that's really good to have that. Thank you. Um, I was just going to say, uh, chime in, like, you certainly can't change the rules midstream, like, 100%. Um, but, like, some, for, from our, some of our other stuff, you know, it's this, the main point has been that there is a strong Northampton component, or, like, it's going to impact Northampton. So, you know, when we're doing some of our calls for, you know, during the grant rounds, some of the times that you don't have to be a resident in Northampton, but Northampton has to, ha you know, get the benefit of what's going to happen or has to have a substantial Northampton component. And so, like, you know, kids from the surrounding town, uh, you know, they go to school here. And so I, to me that like, not that residency. So I, sometimes I, I think we could open it up to not having to be a resident, a resident of the town, 
but you know you're they're here five you know technically they'd be here five days a week uh for you know a good chunk of the day you know so sometimes if we can open stuff up i think that might be nice for kids who just don't happen to live here yeah i think in terms of an artist i think it's easier because then you could say you know it's like you were saying amon it's like then they get the benefits yes i've shown in in APE gallery, or I've shown at this place, or my work is up at Amherst, blah, 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 or, or I've done a series of, of, of performances here. And I, 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 th I think it's just being mindful of what it is that we're trying to do with each award or situation, and to be as inclusive as possible within that framework. Sounds great. Um, do y'all have a sense of how many applicants there are so far? No. Um, so I guess I would I would say maybe if possible, if folks could just share the call out with their networks one more time, hmm. like send it to folks in your inbox just yeah. in case we want to. I, I was like, do we need a big push to get the word out, or do we have a thousand applicants? Yeah. Well, I don't, it's interesting because we talked about how to get at, you know, some of the applicants, where to reach the youth and, and to get people to, to, um, to apply. Yeah. I, you know, whether, and I don't know, I know there were some issues around the schools and I'd have to kind of go back. Freeman, did you, um, in, I know Lori was going to go and talk to, I think from the, from my, um, understanding from before the minutes before that, um, you know, there were some issues around because at the time, um, you know, the, the principals were so caught up with the whole um, MCAS, so they weren't even wanting to get into talking about, you know, the call to the poet laureate, but. Um. Um, actually, Tulani is, was the contact person for the high school. Okay. Um, and I don't, you know. Okay. Okay. So when we get to the schools, Tulani. Okay, yeah. Can say if she's, if she, you know, we've, we've had some challenges, as mm. you said connecting with the, yeah. the school leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really fortunate to be able to speak to Des. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not having any luck yet, like zero. Uh, mm -hmm. I am going to continue to read down to them, but the high, yeah, it's just a lot. Mm -hmm. And plus, I mean, I, I'm sure just because they're in schools vaccinating. So, you know, with some yes. know, groups of kids too. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing that's going on at the same time. Well, I have I have an just let me jump in and say I have a number of friends from uh, former colleagues from Renaissance who were over the other day, which was an amazing thing to have them over in my house and sitting inside face to face, hugging and enjoying each other. Um, and, you know, I, I, there's not a teacher I speak to who doesn't feel like this year cannot end soon enough. Um, so I, I fully understand and I'm sure administrators feel similarly. I wonder if anyone might be able to share the call with um, only in Northampton Facebook page and the Northampton community Facebook page. I know that the high school students are not there, but their parents might be there. Um, or if there is a call with specific language, just maybe can, can someone from this committee send it around and then I can do a push on social media as well? Yeah, I put it in 413 awake. I'll put it in there again. It got, I'm sure it got lost. I also am getting ready. I'm meeting with a young woman who is starting to do a column and wants to talk about arts for the Gazette. So I thought I'd do a little push with that as well we're meeting later on this week, so. Yeah. But uh, I'll do the 413 Awake again for that crowd. That's a big Facebook group. Has anyone reached out to Big Brothers, Big Sisters? Who would be who would be a good contact? Do you know Jesse there? I could be, I'd be willing to do that, but I just don't know who to. Yeah, um, I, I can put you in touch or you can, you can send me, uh, you okay. know the introductory email, and I can send okay. it out on a on a joint email. Okay. Good. Okay. 
Thanks, everyone. Um, school update? Um, Talana, you want to jump in? Shall I? Uh, you can start. I mean, I'm pretty much just a mixed bag of everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Talani, Lori, and I have had several conversations, a couple of conversations in multiple email exchanges. And, and um, you know, so the, the, the way the subcommittee got started was we started wondering about how our school is using the funds that the Arts Council is giving to PTOs. Um, that was the initial impetus. Um, and, and when we met, the three of us met, we decided that we were gonna explore you know, how can we support the school? What is it the art council to do can, to support the arts in the schools? Um, and just to have that, that opening question. And what, what is the vision of the arts in the school, schools? And so, uh, and, and then Tulani had this wonderful idea of a celebration of student art in the beginning of the school year um, and possibly to make it really accessible to make a, and time jump in please, if, if I, I trample all over this idea. Um, it, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, this idea of making a video of, of some work that students from, you know, whatever schools are participating that, that then could be used by the school administrators or leadership at the beginning of the school year as part of a welcoming back kind of a, event and maybe have the, the, the artwork be artwork that the students did to get through the pandemic, you know, so something that was just maybe organic, not necessarily just out of school. It could have been a school project, but not, not necessarily. So, so we went to the, we, we decided to divvy up the schools and um, Jelani had a high school and, and um, Jackson Street, no, it was a bridge, right? And Lori had um, Jackson Street and Ryan Road, and I took uh, JFK and Leeds. Um, and we've had, you know, it's been difficult to re to get in touch with the the principals. Um, and I'll let Tulani speak to about her experience. Lori has had some some success with uh, Ryan Road. Um, you know, they're just feeling overwhelmed as people referenced, um, but she thinks that they would be receptive to the celebration idea, at least. Mm -hmm. um, I had a great, as I said, a great conversation this morning with Des and, and the two art, his two art teachers. And he, um, he had immediately three ideas that, that he was looking for support in. And one of them was he'd like to, uh, contribute. He'd like to have his students build a float for the Puerto Rican um, uh, parade in Springfield, um, and so he he had actually actually the the superintendent had passed that that his interest that's his interest along to Brian and Brian reached out to us. I don't know if anybody remembers seeing that email, and I, you know, had already contacted. Um, Des. So I'm, look, I'm looking into it. I, I thought I had seen that it was canceled again this year. It was canceled last year. So I, I'm looking into that. But that's one, one area that, that Des was interested in. Another area he was interested in is he's, he's thinking of having family engagement nights every month. And, you know, often months have themes. And one of the things that he would love help with is getting some artists to, to come in uh, that are connected to those themes um, for students and families. And then the third piece was, um, he said, you know, unfortunately he did not um, do a very good job of, of scheduling the arts during this year. Um, and he realizes that some students, you know, he was just trying to keep the trains on the track. Mm -hmm. um, and that some students didn't get any art at all. And he threw out the idea that it would be great if there was a way for us to figure out an opportunity for them to be, for some of those students to have some exposure to the arts early in the summer, if that was possible. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I'm starting to wrap my head around. And I'm more than happy to hear thoughts that any of you might have. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, so our hope is that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have a sense after these initial conversations. I still haven't heard from Chris Wentz, who's the, the principal over at Leeds. Uh, she's tried to reach me and I've tried to reach her. Um, so I feel optimistic that we'll get through. Um, but at my, our sense is that what we'd like is at the end of this to have a good sense about where the schools are with regard to the arts. Mm -hmm. And if there's a way for us to, to support them, to support the arts, support the students, the families. Um, you know, my vision for the arts is for it not to be an activity, right? Mm -hmm. But to be a way for being human, um, you know? And, and so, you know, I have this grand image of what that could be, um, but we'll see where, where, where it leads. And, and it may be slow going because of, you know, the state of the schools right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and Tawana, you have any, any, anything to add? Um, I haven't had any luck. I've had, I got pushed off immediately from the high school principal. Uh, I didn't have her. I, you know, as a <laughs> 2009 grad, I mean, I'm going to keep pushing and trying to act, uh, get a little bit more of like other teachers involved, uh, who I previously had to see if I can get any sort of support. And, uh, swindle my way through in other directions. Um, but the elementary school from Bridge Street, I I got some contact information, but they they just seemed really overwhelmed and frankly, like even a little just depressed on that atmosphere of what is going on. You know, they're just like, we barely got to do anything with our kids. Um, and kind of were just like we're almost like pooped out and just care, obviously, but didn't have much motive motivation to to do much with the kids at this point in the school year so i also think it it also didn't occur to me that this one of the one of the women i spoke to was also my elementary school like art teacher so it's kind of like and she's like i work at both schools so i'm sorry if i got which school you didn't go to correct and i'm like but why are you teaching at two schools <laughs> like <laughs> that's also problematic like there should at least be one teacher mm -hmm. per school so those are questions and conversations that have been starting to roll around as to what sort of even advocacy do we need to be having to have appropriate staffing at each building oh, wow. for for you know for art to be fruitful mm. um, and I just generally don't think that uh, I love Freeman just stating like I envision art being a part of a vibrant community for the for our school systems and I, I mean obviously teachers who go into art and teaching both music art and everything else are in for it as well but I don't think that they have any directive or envisionment on what, or even a collective envisionment on what that looks like. So if that might be something that we as an arts council or a subcommittee could be working on as well, just to even be a motivator as like, you know, a backbone mm -hmm. to our teachers. And cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. and cheerleaders, exactly. So that's where I'm at. Hopefully I can get some contact at least a communication before the end of the school year from the high school is kind of my goal. <laughs> yeah, that's that's unhappy. That's that's sad to hear that mm. you that kind of response. But but you know, not surprising, right? Um, right. <laughs> um, Lori, by the way, one of the things that she said is that at Ryan Road, one of the reactions she felt that the she got was, "Well, what are you asking us to do?" You know, it sounds like, you know, it's, it's, that's such a public school orientation, like somebody mm -hmm. from the top telling you, this is what you, mm -hmm. you have to do. And, you know, so I'm glad that she said that to me because I started off right away this morning talking to JFK saying, I'm not, a I'm not asking you to do anything. I just want right. to understand how we can help you. Um, and he was all prepared anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, it, isn't he's new too, right? He's, he's new principal. He's new, yeah, and um, yeah, he's got uh, he's got good energy. Just mm -hmm. you know, just interacting with him, and and the two, the, just watching the way the art teachers were, they were they were happy. They were you know they were comfortable. So I think he's they feel supported, and 
Mm -hmm. And they were very excited about the project with uh, the Miriam was talking about, mm -hmm. you know, involving the students with that. And I, and I think, you know, the, the, the qualifications that we have for going forward, I think will be easy for them to yeah. adapt as, if we find the right people uh, mm -hmm. or they, they may find the right people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of arts in the school, the one thing that the jazz festival has, has done that we've gotten a grant is that um, the Green Street Jazz has been going out um, to both JFK. They, we've gotten relationships with the, the music teachers. And um, what happens is that whenever there's a guest um, come to um, you know, at the bowling alley, with, there's a plan and you know working out where the musicians go into the schools and play with the kids. And sometimes they'll give a concert or they work directly. So the kids who are, are, are um, in the music classes will actually play with renowned musicians. So that, that is also nice. happening in the school. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, so, one other thing, so let me just let me say one other thing that the teacher mentioned, Danielle, and that was that, that they said that there had been a drama, um, uh, what did they call it? She called it, it wasn't a club, a drama workshop that had been going on at the, at the middle school for a while and that that's no longer happening. And that's another area that they would love to have support in because they, they felt that there was a lot of activity around both the theatric, the, 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 the theater aspect, the, the playing, the language itself, but also the, the setting and the staging of, of these events. Um, so that's, the, so those are four specific things, plus um, the project that Miriam presented, the, the unity mural, mm -hmm. um, you know, for connections to the middle school. So I, I feel really excited about mm -hmm. the possibility of that. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Freeman. Um, one of the things I wanted to name is that at the museum where I work, one of the things we do is whenever we invite an artist to give a talk, we try to plug them into a community center, a campus organization, an informal setting where they can mentor students. For us, it's usually college students. But another possibility for us or something that we can think about is whenever we pay an artist to participate in the public art festival, to be in first night, um, whatever it may be, I wonder if we could make the offer to that artist, would you like to spend half an hour in a public school classroom? And I don't know if the schools, if that's something that would be receptive to the schools, if that's something we would formalize, but that might be one avenue that we could take. Another, um, another thing to think about is, I currently have a few artists that are reaching out to me for that we did not award grants to this past grant round, but are thinking about applying for fall. And they really are struggling with how to sort of increase community participation in their project or make their project something that we would fund mm -hmm. because they want to do a photo show and the concept is light and mysticism and they don't know who to get as an audience, right? So I, I sort of wonder if, like either Freeman or, or it's funny if I could connect some of those artists to you all directly. Mm -hmm. And if you can then offer, you can assess whether this, like this particular artist or any other artists are a good fit. Cause some may not be, maybe we not, maybe we don't want to put all of the artists who write to us in a classroom with students. So I would trust y'all to make that judgment. And then if it would be a good fit, make the introduction between those artists and the teachers that y'all are connected with mm -hmm. um, so that those artists can start building a relationship and have stronger grant applications when they apply to us for funding in the next grant round. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, I love the idea and both of those ideas. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely, yeah let's, yeah, let's communicate about that. Thank you. a meeting. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll get into it, yeah. <laughs> Great. I'll forward you. I'll forward you my very lengthy correspondence with some of our our correspondent, our artists, and you can assess. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for all that work. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy, do you have a volunteer update for us? Screen. Um, no, nothing really. I think we're going to be talking about trying to figure out, depending on the scheme of things, you know, issues around trans performance. I think that's our next. Um, big, big event. And I'm not sure, you know, with any of the other events happening on how much, um, 
how much uh, input or, or hands-on from the volunteers we may need. But I mean, the, the big push is obviously first night. That's where we really have to think about the volunteers, but, but there may be some other things going on. So I'm just, gonna, I'll be in touch with Brian with the, what the volunteer needs are. And also to figure out how to, you know, nurture or get back and find out where these volunteers are, or if people are still comfortable volunteering. Thanks, Kathy. Mm -hmm. So with that, I will motion to close the municipal meeting. Mm -hmm. I have a quick question before we do okay. that, if you don't mind, Danielle. Um, has there been talk about when uh, we can meet in person? I I heard that there was there was like grumbling in the the state house uh, last week about changing that state emergency order, but it, I don't think it's changed yet mm -hmm. and it hasn't changed for the city. So I'm not sure if we would have to have both state and city changeover. Mm. Um, well, you I, want I to meet at the uh, Billy and the Beast, Jesse? <laughs> Anywhere, really. I just, uh, you know, mm -hmm. all of the uh, Zoom cutouts and everything, it, it's, it, I'm sure everyone is getting fed up with that. Mm -hmm. um, and if everyone's comfortable, obviously, you know, that's that's the other half of this yeah. whole thing. Well, interestingly enough, today we had a hospital uh, emergency ethics committee meeting and it was at the hospital. That was the first time we got together. Mm -hmm. I would guess that probably our August meeting would be the first mm -hmm. one where we're officially all together. But there have also been some conversations about informally getting us all together mm -hmm. so there might be mm -hmm. some email it's nothing is set in stone yet but i think in the next few weeks there might be opportunity for the board to gather not during a meeting to just talk mm -hmm. <laughs> i have something you in person ever i have something to add to that conversation um uh lori had offered her house uh a year or so ago to for folks to gather at and and Brian had asked her to find some dates and then he asked me if I would coordinate uh, to find when would be the best time so I can tell you now that Lori told me today um, that July is uh, the weekends on July and possibly during the week are open possibilities. So I will start sending something around to folks to see, to try to get a sense of, of when we might, might do that and some detail about what that might look like after we've got that cleared up. That would be delightful. That would be cool. cool. Thank you. Um, Baker is lifting the state of emergency on June 15th. So I think uh -huh. um, I would imagine many municipalities will fall mm -hmm. in suit mm -hmm. as well. Thanks, Rachel. So it could be that our July meeting is, is, is that something folks are would want a July? If, if we have the clearance, would y'all want to meet in person in July? You can also think about it and write email. We don't have to, don't have to be on the spot now. Um, but if everybody's vaxxed, I have meeting in person would be great. Agreed. Me too. Okay. So we have a, a tentative uh, happiness to meet in person in July if we're approved to do so. Yeah. Um, so but July 15th, think, right? July so, 13th, right? First Tuesday, second mm -hmm. Tuesday. Yeah, the second Tuesday, it's thirteenth. I'm sorry, my yeah. eyes. I didn't see the number. That's all right. Yep, that is the thirteenth. So stay tuned for email. I'm sure Brian will let us know when it's safe to meet in person, um, oh. or when we have the go ahead to meet in person. And um, if there are folks who still want to meet over Zoom, I think that that would still be an option too, right? So don't feel pressure if it doesn't feel right because I think. There's all degrees of comfort and right. new and scary. So there's no pressure at all. And for an in-person gathering, everyone is like wanted and welcome. But if that doesn't feel right, then there will be many more opportunities for that as well. Right. But 
thank you, Freeman, for the update. Um, so I will move to close the municipal meeting. Yes. Second. Second vote. Yes. Okay. So the the municipal meeting is closed. Uh, we do have an ink meeting on the docket. I don't have any updates from that. I don't know if anyone else does. I don't know if we have to open that meeting and close it, or if we can just skip the ink meeting for tonight. Who knows procedures? Kathy? You're muted. I just don't want my dog to start barking. And <laughs> um, I, I think why don't we open it and then we can just say per, per se, there are no, no no information, blah, blah, blah. I'll write something up that sounds okay. good and we could just quickly close it just for the sake of Thank it. Thank you. Um, so I move to open the mm -hmm. ink meeting. Second. Yep. Second. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the meeting is open. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID-19 Artist Relief Fund update. As we mentioned in the um, mm -hmm. municipal meeting, we are awarding $13,000 in grants. Mm -hmm. We're finalizing two recipients um, and we're looking at approximately six, 65 mm -hmm. grantees in the $200 range for grants. Perfect. Any other updates on the COVID-19 Artist Relief Fund? Thank you, Jesse and Amy of Belly of the Beast oh, yeah. for giving us a, a free food Sunday. I'm yeah. sorry, I forgot to mention oh, that earlier. Yeah, we have it here. It's okay. I got so much food that day. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was. Y'all have to go try the meatballs. Y'all have to get cinnamon buns. Oof, it was so good. <laughs> I wish we could have raised more, but I'm glad that we were able to do it. All right. Um, I, I just wanted to say one other thing about the uh, ink board, and that is that, uh, you know, I was asked to be the treasurer. So I met with Brian actually and started going over the books. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there. I'm, I'm uh, you know, Brian just would like to have somebody else other than himself and his annual accountant looking at the books. Okay. Um, so I'll be familiarizing myself with them and making, yeah. trying to make sure I can stay up with that level okay. of math. Thank you for doing that, Freeman. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Freeman. Yeah, of course. Um, and events, I, I don't have any events updates. It sounds like trans performance is happening and we'll mm -hmm. hear more about it from Brian. At the next, um, yeah. at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, any other ink? Yeah. Nope. Business. No. All right. So I will move to close the ink okay. meeting. Second. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. All right. The ink meeting is closed. All of our meetings are closed. Thank you all That's so great. much. It was great to see you. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Great. Thank, Thank you. All. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Yay! Thank Good you. Good job. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. -bye.